Hello and welcome to EPG Part Shalom on Criminology. I am Dr. Kumar Askan Pandey, Associate Professor at Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia National Law University. Today I will be talking about one of the most intricate issues of criminal justice process that is recidivism. Recidivism has bothered criminologists since ages and it is considered to be one of the most complex problems of criminology that has eluded a precise answer. Recidivism is also at the same time one of the most basic concepts in criminal justice. Recidivists or repeat offenders pose considerable challenge to the criminal justice administration as recidivism is often seen as a failure of the correctional justice. Recidivism is directly related to many core criminal justice issues such as incapacitation, deterrence and rehabilitation. There is no universally accepted definition of recidivism. However, according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, recidivism means and I quote, a tendency to relapse into a previous condition or mode of behavior, especially relapse into criminal behavior. The Washington State Department of Corrections, DOC has defined recidivism as a return to the DOC facility within five years as a result of a new conviction or parole violation by an offender who either had been paroled or been discharged from such a facility. Thus, recidivism means return of an offender to criminal behavior following conviction, whether the conviction results in incarceration or release on probation, etc. Generally, recidivism means reoffending by a person after he or she has been punished and undergone the sentence. The National Crime Records Bureau, NCRB of India, defines recidivism as the tendency of relapsing into crimes by criminals. Accordingly, a recidivist is a person who relapses into crime again and again after having been convicted on previous occasion or occasions. It is important to note that the studies on recidivism and practices of countries vary as to within what period reoffending should be treated as recidivism, but generally recidivism is measured by a person's rearrest, reconviction or resentencing during a period of three years after the end of previous sentence and release from prison. Now, as far as the learning objectives are concerned, at the end of this module, the learner is expected to understand the concept of recidivism in general and recidivism in India in particular. The learner is also expected to understand the reasons for recidivism and should be able to answer the question as to why certain individuals reoffend while others desist from committing crime again. Now let us talk about the statistical account of recidivism. In fact, uh, statistics on recidivism vary from country to country and place to place. This variation is largely explained on various factors including the efficacy of correctional system. It is also important to note that there is no universally agreed standard for measuring and reporting true recidivism, which is a very complex matter. Official records in most countries are taken either from the police or courts. However, these records may not reflect the real extent of recidivism as only a proportion of crimes are reported. Even lesser number of crimes are detected and crimes are not recorded on any centralized system. It is interesting to note that the countries where the correction system is arguably more modern in dealing with the prisoners, rate of recidivism is substantially higher. In the United States of America, 
the bureau of justice statistics studies have reported very high rates of recidivism amongst the released prisoners in one of such studies that tracked more than 4 lakh prisoners in 30 states after their release from prison in 2005 it was found that more than 2/3 of prisoners that would be 67.8% were rearrested within 3 years of their release further more than 3/4 of prisoners that would be 76.6% were rearrested within 5 years of their release of all those prisoners who were rearrested more than half of the prisoners that stands at 56.7% were rearrested even before the end of first year of the release the problem of recidivism is also acute in the united kingdom where the rate of recidivism is as high as 28% from july 2013 to june 2014 around 5 lakh offenders both adults and juveniles were convicted with same kind of punishment such as caution a non custodial conviction at court or were released from custody around 131000 of these offenders committed a proven reoffense within a year this brings the overall proven reoffending rate at 26% the rate of reoffending has remained stable fluctuating between around 26 and 28% since 2003 a proven reoffense is defined as any offense committed in a one year follow up period that leads to a court conviction or caution in the one year follow up or within a further 6 months waiting period to allow the offense to be proven in court Recidivism in India is reflected in the data collected and collated by the NCRB every year. According to the data released by NCRB in 2015, out of total number of persons arrested in 2014 that stood at 37 lakh 90,812, the number of those who were second time convicts was 2 lakh 30. 4896 that is 6.2% and the number of third time convicts was around 47000 that is stood at 1.3% and those convicted for the fourth or more times was 12960 that is stood at 0.3% the share of recidivists amongst all offenders increased to 7.8% during 2014 as compared to 7.2% in 2013 in 2011 and 2012 the rate of recidivism remained static at 6.9% the data released by ncrb in 2015 also analyzed the frequency of repeat offending in the year 2014 and found that 79.4% recidivists were convicted once while the figure stood at 16.2% and 4.4% for the recidivists who were convicted twice and thrice respectively it means that the rate of recidivism lowers with the frequency of conviction it is clear that recidivism is comparatively low in india in spite of many problems plaguing the correctional administration now coming to the causes of recidivism uh, we all understand that uh, prison is not only the place for a convict to serve his or her sentence but also a place from where he or she should come out as a law abiding individual desisting from crime of late it has it has been found that a very important relationship exists between the concept of recidivism and criminal desistance the latter is defined as a process by which a person arrives at a permanent state of non offending the convict released from prison 
will either desist from crime or will reoffend the reasons why convicts reoffend are various and recidivism cannot be attributed to one single factor let us now discuss the principal causes of recidivism the most important cause of recidivism would of course be the prisons as a recidivist is someone who reoffends after being released from prison it is imperative that the role of prison in recidivism is properly investigated and analyzed ideally the correctional institutions as the prisons are referred to in modern criminological literature they should be the harbinger of reform correctional treatment with a rehabilitative orientation is considered to be an imperative of modern penology which has abandoned just talionis however the truth is just the opposite in the 18th century in one of his treatises caesar lombroso likened the prisons and i quote to criminal universities unquote by this he meant that the prisons act as centers of criminal education and training rather than being places for punishment and rehabilitation a convict is exposed to notorious and hardened criminals and the overall prison environment is not conducive to any reform and rehabilitative measure but curiously even the differential classification of prisoners on the basis of seriousness of their crime has not yielded desired result as has been found in many researches in sunil batra versus delhi administration the condition of prisons has been portrayed thus and i quote for years and years prisoners don't see a child a woman or even animals they lose touch with the outside world they brood and wrap themselves in angry thoughts of fear and revenge and hatred forget the good of the world kindness and joy oscar wilde says every prison that men built is built with bricks of shame and bound with bars lest christ should see how men their brothers maim in india the prisons are still governed by the archaic prisons act of 1894 and state prison manuals framed under this old law in the year 2003 the bureau of police research and development bprnd ministry of home affairs government of india prepared a model prison manual 2003 to fine tune prison administration and treatment of prisoners in accordance with the modern norms of penology however even in the modern prison manual of 2003 concern for recidivism has not been adequately addressed the only reference to recidivism in the model prison manual 2003 appears in chapter 25 where it has been provided that young prisoners are impressionable a young offender of today can be a hardened recidivist of tomorrow such offenders can be reclaimed as useful citizens and can have better prospects for being re-educated to a socially useful way of life however it all seems to be a distant dream and in spite of judicial interventions in prison administration for more than last 3 decades little appears to have changed as a result of which inadequate reform and rehabilitation measures have failed to check recidivism on the contrary it has been found that differential placement may affect increase in recidivism it is seen that more hardened criminals or those convicted of heinous offenses are placed in high security barracks that are more punitive and it is intended that 
it would decrease reoffending amongst the peers with similar criminal propensities. It has been found that exposure to inmates who have similar or higher propensities of crime may increase recidivism. A scientific and progressive approach needs to be adopted if these offenders are to be saved from damaging and traumatic experiences of incarceration. The model prison manual of 2003 laid down two guiding principles for treating young offenders. Firstly, as far as possible, young offenders should not be kept in institutions meant for adults and habitual offenders and secondly institutions for young offenders should be so classified that diverse training programs designed to suit each homogeneous group can be conveniently organized. Inappropriate punishment is also considered to be one of the factors of recidivism and one of the objects of punishment is clearly to deter the convict from re-offending. Towards this end, punishment should be proportionate to the uh, crime committed, to the seriousness of the crime committed. If the crime uh, uh, that is uh, committed is very serious in nature and the punishment is very meager, of course, that would uh, lead to emboldening the sentiment of the criminal and would lead to re-offending and thereby uh, uh, recidivism. Sometimes punishments may be inappropriate for the type of offense or offender. For example, a substantially long prison term for a first time young offender in lieu of an alternative sanction such as probation would be inappropriate. Lack of reintegration opportunities are also one of the factors contributing to recidivism. Convicts who have served long periods of incarceration often find it difficult to reintegrate in the mainstream of the society. For a person who has served a long prison term, say for a decade or more, the world outside may be an entirely new place, making it very difficult for him to cope with the changes which he did not see happening. These changes may be technological, may be related to the public policy, may be the ideals, may be the political changes. When they find it difficult to adopt the new way of life because of these changes, they relapse into criminal behavior. Thus, recidivism may also be a result of an individual's struggle to survive in a new social milieu and not because of his personality or the sentence imposed on him. Incorrigibility is also considered to be one of the factors contributing to recidivism. Some convicts may not be that responsive to reformatory and rehabilitative programs and choose to go back to their criminal ways. Exact reasons for incorrigibility are not known, but hereditary may play a key role in recidivism. Researchers have provided a very high positive correlation of bad hereditary, especially of inherited psychopathy and recidivism. According to one theory, recidivists are generally biologically, physically and mentally inferior in constitution, so they become unfit to live a normal life and fail to control their emotions and impulses, Falling, failing to resist temptation of crime. However, the modern behavioral scientists in the United States of America do not accept any relationship between physical abnormality and psychopathic personality of a recidivist. Similarly, white collar criminals and cyber criminals are not poor, deprived and demented individuals, rather they are well educated, technology savvy and highly intelligent people who are smart, 
clever, courageous, and risk takers. The crimes that they commit are so lucrative that they keep on repeating such crimes. For example, tax evasions, corruption, bribery, cyber frauds, and intellectual property related offenses are often repeated by the convicts even after they have been found guilty of such offenses on previous occasions. Another reason for recidivism is uh, the materialistic way of life and peer pressure. The world that we live in is driven by capitalist ideals and material gains. Success today is measured by amount of wealth and financial stability. At the same time, many people may not get equal opportunity to achieve these goals of life. This denial of opportunity leads them to employ illegitimate means of achieving them. If convicts fail to support themselves upon release or feel stressed due to their socio-economic conditions, they may relapse in crime. In this way, recidivism occurs as a result of failure of an individual to cope up with the materialistic cravings and not because he fails to positively re respond to a rehabilitation program or does not appreciate the consequences of his crimes. Young offenders are especially prone to peer pressure and may re-offend due to social influences outside of the criminal justice system. Mental health and drug abuse is another reason of recidivism and it is found that several convicts may be mentally ill and unable to respond to any kind of sanction including prison term, rehabilitative or any other measure taken in response to their crime. The mental illness may be due to biological reasons or induced by substance abuse. The result would likely be same in both the cases. However, drug addicts are more likely to relapse in drug related crimes such as possession, peddling and substance abuse. Drug abuse and recidivism create a vicious circle and a cobweb making it very difficult for the convict to refrain from reoffending. Several surveys and data in the United States of America endorse the hypothesis that addicted recidivists make up the majority population of all the recidivists. A study by the New York State Division of Parole showed that 30 percent of drug offenders on parole had their parole uh, revoked after having committed drug related offenses within a year. Prison statistics invariably reveal that drug offenders are commonly recidivists. Experience, common sense and studies all indicate that the majority of recidivists are addicts who reoffend due to their addiction. Now coming to the measures for containing recidivism, it has to be noted that although recidivism is not a major problem in India, criminal justice system, uh, yet ways must be found to contain recidivism before it takes a demonic proposition. As there is not one single reason or cause of recidivism, the ways and measures for reducing recidivism are also varied. Penologists in early and medieval ages considered harsher punishment as a panacea for recidivism. However, this approach has not yielded desired results, rather it has been seen that unduly harsh punishment, solitary confinements or a strict vigil has proved to be counterproductive. Penologists today advocate individualized treatment of offenders where criminal is the prime focus of correctional system. In this method, 
criminality is regarded as an outcome of social disorder which can be cured only by individualized treatment of the offender. Thus, efforts are made to identify the reasons and causes of crime and to address those causes that lead the convict to reoffend. Now, certain measures are preferred within the realm of criminal justice system to contain recidivism. For example, harsher punishment is given to those convicts who reoffend or are habitual criminals. This is primarily due to the thinking that punishment on the previous occasion of commission of crime was not sufficiently severe and deterrent. Let us take the example of Indian Penal Code 1860. There are several instances in IPC where a repeat offender is given a much harsher punishment compared to the punishment that is prescribed for the first time offender. Section 75 of Indian Penal Code provides that a previous convict of offenses under chapter 12, offenses relating to coins and government stamps and chapter 17, offenses relating to property punishable with sentence of imprisonment of 3 years or more shall if found guilty of any offence punishable under these chapters with like imprisonment for the like term shall be subject for every such subsequent offence to imprisonment for life or to imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 10 years. The idea that enhanced punishment for recidivists will deter them from reoffending is still in vogue. A previous convict of human trafficking as defined in section 370 of Indian Penal Code shall be punished with life imprisonment which shall mean imprisonment for the remainder of the natural span of convict's life, whereas the first time offender may be given punishment ranging between 7 years to 10 years of imprisonment. Under section 376 E of IPC, a person who has been previously convicted of an offence punishable under section 376 that is rape or section 376 capital A that is causing death or uh, resulting in persistent uh, vegetative state of the victim or under section 376 D that is gang rape, if subsequently convicted for any of these offences shall be punished with imprisonment for life that would mean for the remainder of the life term of the convict or for death. Similarly, a person habitually dealing in stolen property may be given life imprisonment, whereas a first time offender who receives a stolen property is punishable with a maximum of 3 years imprisonment or fine or both. Recidivists and habitual offenders are also brought under constant surveillance so that the possibility of reoffending may be eliminated or reduced. Section 356 of Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 provides that a competent court may at the time of passing of sentence upon a previously convicted offender for certain offences under section 215 sections 489A to 489D or section 506 or any of the offences under chapter 12 or chapter 16 or chapter 17 um, uh, may also order that the convict's residence or any change of his residence uh, shall be 
uh, shall be shall be recorded by the police and shall be kept under under constant surveillance the state governments concerned may make rules to carry out the requirement of notification of residents etc of a released convict any breach of notification order may be punished habitual offenders may also be liable to execute a bond with sureties for their good behavior for a period not exceeding 3 years state governments have also enacted legislations or framed regulations to deal with the problem of recidivism by prescribing stricter penalties and surveillance of repeat offenders it is also to be noted that the provisions of these state laws must conform to the constitutional right to life and personal liberty as enshrined in article 21 of the constitution and also the restrictions placed on a recidivists movement must only be a reasonable restriction on the freedom of movement under article 19 1d and right to privacy in govind versus state of mp a case of 1975 validity of regulations 855 and 856 of the madhya pradesh police regulations made by the government under the police act of 1861 were considered regulation 855 provides that where district superintendent of police believes that a particular individual is leading a life of crime and his conduct shows a determination to lead a life of crime the individual's name may be ordered to be entered in the surveillance register and he would be placed under regular surveillance regulation 856 provides that such surveillance may consist of domiciliary visits both by day and night at frequent but regular intervals the supreme court held that and i quote it cannot be said that surveillance by domiciliary visit would always be an unreasonable restriction upon the right of privacy it is only persons who are suspected to be habitual criminals and those who are determined to lead criminal life that is subjected to surveillance if crime in this context is confined to such acts as involve public peace or security the law imposing such a reasonable restriction must be upheld as valid unquote even in pre independence period it has been observed by the courts that the restrictions on residence and movement can be imposed only on a proven recidivist and not on a mere suspect of a crime where an order to furnish bond has been passed against a habitual offender it may not be permissible to place restrictions on his movement recidivists are kept in high security prisons or prison barracks in fact the jail committee of 1920 had recommended that habitual offenders or recidivists should be segregated from ordinary criminals and the former must be kept in high security prisons the jail reform committee of 1946 and the model prison manual of 2003 also provide for segregation of habitual offenders from ordinary criminals the model prison manual of 2016 which has revised the earlier manual of 2003 in chapter 25 also provides for a more relevant and comprehensive security classification of high risk prisoners including recidivists the key to reform of a prisoner is the opportunities of his rehabilitation and reintegration in the society after care of convicts is essential to prevent reoffending many state laws dealing with habitual offenders or recidivists 
focus on corrective training for them. For example, under the Madras Restriction of Habitual Offenders Act of 1948, the state government is empowered to place the notified offender in industrial, agricultural or other reformatory settlement. The Madras Act is credited with being the trailblazer in reformatory approach towards recidivists. This act was followed by several states that also enacted laws focusing on correctional approach in dealing with recidivists. It has been seen that most of the property crimes are committed by people coming from the marginalized sections of the society. A state sponsored robust program focusing on elimination of poverty and generation of employment opportunities will be helpful in preventing relapse in crime. To prepare the offender only mentally is not sufficient to bring a change in his habits unless the conditions surrounding him are also changed. Now, coming to certain trends in recidivism, it is found that in spite of variations in rate of recidivism and measures to contain the same, certain trends are universally visible. Uh, for example, property offenses are most uh, widely committed repeat offenses more than 75 percent of property offenders are previously convicted or involved in property uh, crime. That seems to be the reason that section 75 of IPC primarily focused on enhanced punishment for property related offenses committed by recidivists. Drug offenders and sexual offenders are also more prone to relapse in crime. In the majority of cases of reoffending, relapse occurs within one year of release from prison. Nearly all recidivism occurs within three years of completion of sentence or release from prison. Violent criminals are least likely to relapse in crime. Sexual offenders suffering from psychological or biological conditions are most likely to recidivate. Ironically, age is an important factor in recidivism. It has been seen that people who are punished at a relatively young age are more likely to relapse in crime. In India, thanks to the prohibition under the juvenile justice laws, records of juvenile delinquents are not maintained. Therefore, the data on recidivism does not include figures of rate of reoffending by juveniles when they become adults. But there is no reason to believe that the conclusion that young offenders are more prone to recidivism is not true for India. Gender also plays a very significant role in recidivism and men are more likely to reoffend than women. People who reoffend are invariably given more severe punishment. The reformatory approaches are less likely to be applied upon a person who has reoffended. For example, the benefit of probation is denied to an offender against whom a previous conviction has been recorded. It is seen that offenders with a weak socio-economic condition and having poor educational background are more likely to reoffend. Recidivism is a traditional, if not the most traditional basis for a sentencing courts increasing an offender's sentence and recidivism does not relate to the commission of the offense, but goes to the punishment only. We can refer to sections 360 and uh, section 3 of the Probation Offenders Act 1958 in this regard. To conclude, 
there is no denying the fact that the theoretical construct of recidivism is not a difficult uh, proposition. It simply means that some people relapse in crime after they have completed their sentence, be it a prison term, a treatment program or any other sanction. Although the rate of recidivism is not alarming in India, recidivism is a vital component in understanding the criminal justice. Why some people reoffend while others desist from crime is a question that eludes a statistical and scientific answer. Rising rate of recidivism is often used as a justification to punish the first time offender more severely. The same justification is applied to punish recidivist with harsher punishments. However, many believe that recidivism is a reflection on the failure of present system of punishment to accurately and effectively deal with offenders. Prison term spent by a convict as part of his sentence should be used in imparting industrial training and development of skills to help them cope with the modern world outside the prison. Indeterminate sentences should become norm where prisoners earn their release by showing significant improvement in their behavior and not merely because their determinate prison term has come to an end. Education inside the prison should be holistic and individualized. It is also important to understand that drug addicts and psychopaths require an entirely different kind of rehabilitation programs and should be treated differently from ordinary recidivists. Achieving a zero rate of recidivism may be a utopian ideal, but with certain measures rate of recidivism can certainly drop. To sum it up, recidivism simply means relapse in crime after one has been found guilty of an offense and visited with criminal sanction. The rate of recidivism varies from country to country and from place to place. It may vary significantly from state to state within the same country. Also, there is no universal formula to calculate the rate of recidivism. Generally, recidivism is measured by the rate of proven reoffending where the offender has had a previous recorded conviction. There is not one single reason of recidivism and multiple factors are responsible for the same. Prisons, hereditary causes, inappropriate punishment, lack of rehabilitation programs, incorrigibility, failure to cope with the world outside of the prison, peer pressure and drug abuse are some of the principal reasons of recidivism. Responses to the problem of recidivism are also varied. Usually, recidivists are given more severe punishment and are denied release on probation, etc. However, a stricter punishment and denial of release on probation do not always result in reformation and reduction in rate of recidivism. Prison administration sees the recidivists as the potential threat to the prison discipline and a bad influence upon the ordinary criminals, further segregating them and denying them the facilities available to other prison inmates. Thank you very much for watching.